looking at humanity with new eyes and renewed hope. Shedding light on the topic. As handmaids, we desire to contemplate the world from the heart of Jesus. With the certainty that we are fellow travelers sharing the same flesh, we feel urged to advance the dialogue between our charism and the reality of human sexuality today, diverse and complex. This topic, for many reasons and for centuries, has often been lived and approached as a taboo. The cultural changes of recent times open new spaces of freedom to look at this dimension of our humanity with simplicity and with human and Christian maturity. There is a growing awareness that there are different ways of expressing the gift of sexuality. What was diverse or minority has been looked at with fear and a sense of guilt, and the most natural reaction has been silence and discrimination. We all personally know people who suffer in these situations. How do we want to relate to each other? The Lord calls us to conversion. It is necessary to come out of silence, which, while trying to be protective, may not be faithful to what God wants. We wish to say a word in this regard as a body, enlightening each other from one culture to another and helping us to position selves from welcoming point of view. Pope Francis gives witness to this desire with his words and gestures. Here are some questions that may help you to reflect and to open a dialogue in community, a respectful dialogue that does not seek to respond to or to defend positions, but rather to welcome different points of view and to allow selves to be questioned. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. The way to share in community will be through the listening circle. What feelings, reactions, ideas, and or questions arise in you with these images? What does number five of the decree of synodality of General Congregation 21 awaken in you? After the third listening circle, and after the spiritual conversation that has be generated in the community, we leave a brief silence to help us become aware of what we feel after all that we have heard. Based on your own and the community's reflection, what moves you? To what do you feel called? People were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. In silence we reflected on this question. What can you do to make each person feel appreciated and welcomed as they are? We pray with Saint Raphaela. I have contemplated, Lord, the world, your work, and the people who bear your own image marked on their foreheads. And I begin my prayer before your presence, Eucharistic presence of the risen one. This is my body, you said at the Last Supper, to announce your love until death. This is my body you say now, and you direct me to your human images, to all your children, marked forever with a divine seal. Although I often forget it, they too are your body. I want to adore you, Lord, and I want to love you in your children, spread throughout the whole world. I am going to tell you about them. Perhaps in this way I will come to the conviction that they are part of you, part also of me. I place before you Lord my sisters and brothers. May I always remember them with their worries, their joes and sorrows, with their progress and their stumbles. Make yourself present to them so that they may draw near to you so that they may contemplate you and see themselves as images of you. Enlarge, Lord, my heart, so that all people may fit, for in yours there is breadth, depth, height. I want us to come to you together. Amen. We want to give a reparative response together. Shedding light on the topic. The same sun makes the leaves green and paints the roses red, 
smooths the bark of the poplar and wrinkles that of the oaks returns the cold summit to the river and dries the sand on the plain. The sun itself brightens the simple eye of the good and intimidates the cunning with its light, commands that life sing at dawn of everyone who seeks, and turns off the house of the world so that the tired day rest. The sun itself contemplates MacKagan reads their dreams hidden in the seed and in the depths of the soul and recreates each one that they may be who they are, unique among the masses. The sun itself makes each one different, and we in a concert of heartbeats, orchestrated originalities, our kingdom community, the sun itself. Benjamin Gonzalez Buell to S.J. The discriminatory judgments and behaviors of the church towards LGBT plus people cause great pain and are an obstacle to the experience of God's love. There are words and actions that do not bring people closer together, but rather push them away. Pope Francis, in his encyclical Fratelli Tutti, invites us to strengthen the bonds of fellowship with all human beings. Our love for others, for who they are, moves us to seek the best for their lives. Only by cultivating this way of relating to one another will we make possible a social friendship that excludes no one and a fraternity that is open to all. Perhaps this is a favorable time to repair, recognizing the richness that each person is, since we believe in a God who rejoices in diversity. Close to us too there are LGBT plus people. The vulnerable realities that LGBT plus people live are a cry to our mission, from our Eucharistic reparative charism, what can we say? Some circumscriptions have reflected on this topic and this contributes to greater sensitivity and understanding. Today, taking into account new elements that experience, study and testimony give us, it is necessary to take the reflection up again and continue to deepen. We wish, as a body, to give a word that enlightens and motivates us to look at this reality with new eyes. Sexual diversity, which has always existed, is a reality that is becoming more visible and explicit today. This reality asks to be heard with the newness that it brings, the disruptiveness that challenges us, and the desires and questions that the new generations are asking. People with different sexual orientations and conditions, due to our mostly heterosexual cultures, often have added suffering in their lives for openly and naturally displaying their sexual identity and orientation, experiencing rejection, mockery and aggression. Their vulnerability is a cry to our reparative mission. Many times ignorance leads us to foster discriminatory attitudes, accentuating the pain. Openness to diversity has been growing at the societal level. Civil laws in some countries require respect for LGBT plus people. A friendly culture, more sensitive to sexual diversity, has been emerging. Human sexuality is becoming increasingly better understood scientifically and psychologically. Church teaching, however, has not had time to respond adequately to these developments. While remaining faithful to the church, we must learn to better accompany persons of diverse sexualities who are present in the church. This becomes a matter of concern in education parish ministry, youth and family accompaniment and spiritual direction. Rejection, humiliation and prejudice against those in the LGBT plus community is one of the significant wounds in our faith community, at least in the Western Hemisphere. There is a high rate of suicide and other psychological risks in this community due to the discrimination and isolation they suffer. Our charism should have a word to say here. As a church, we have been part of the problem of discrimination, violence and concealment. Perhaps this is a favorable time to make reparation, recognizing the richness that we all are, since we believe in a God who rejoices in diversity. LGBT plus people are part of our families, communities and ministries. Without awareness and formation, we can do great harm by our actions, words and silences on the contrary, this proximity is conducive to generating the necessary reparative dialogue capable of facilitating a friendly, pluralistic and diverse environment. The education we provide in our apostolic works leaves a strong imprint on those who have been formed in them. 
The sexual education, provided explicitly or implicitly, will either contribute to the full development of the person or, on the contrary, will hinder this growth. We need formation on these issues in order to respond from our Eucharistic reparative charism. Here are some questions that may help you to reflect and to open a dialogue in community, a respectful dialogue that does not seek to respond or defend positions, but rather to welcome different points of view and allow us to be challenged. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. The way to share in community will be through the listening circle. From our Eucharistic restorative charism, what can we say? How can we generate the necessary reparative dialogue that facilitates a friendly, plural and diverse environment in our communities and ministry? After the third listening circle, and after the spiritual conversation that has been generated in the community, we leave a brief silence to help us to become aware of what we feel after all that we have heard. To what do you feel called? We ask you, Lord, to give us the grace to grow in sensitivity, acceptance and commitment, thus giving inclusive and reparative witness in the midst of the realities in which we may find selves. Grant that we may welcome each other in our diversity, seeing selves as persons loved by God, equal in dignity, respect and recognition. 